Coming up on today's episode, the new Apple TV. Meh. Plex, we got a shiny, happy interface for your media Apple users. Mr. Heron's going to talk a little bit more about Judder and why you like movies in the theater more than the TV. And of course, the Blu-ray releases for the week of September 7th, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Gamefly. Check out Gamefly.com slash HDNation to get a free trial account. And Netflix. Go to Netflix.com slash HDNation for your free trial membership. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray online satellite cable over the air. Weasels, if it's HD, we like it. Hey, did somebody say New Apple TV? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, they did. $99. Nice price. Tiny footprint, about yay big. A puck. No hard drive. Eh. Netflix integrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And available in four weeks. Eh. Pre-order available now. Now, you might want to think twice before we whip out the credit card. Mm -hmm. Let's start with at Brad TNW, <laughs> who tweeted earlier today. Anyone, I'm quoting, anyone else note how Jobs just mentioned HD without commenting on 720p versus 1080p at Patrick Norton? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. <laughs> quote, Mr. Jobs. Quote, quote, I quote Mr. Jobs. The <laughs> HD revolution is over HD1. That's the exact quote. And yes, yeah, Steve didn't mention an HD on the Apple TV is 720p, baby, all the time, except when it's 640 by 480. And also that Apple has a new rental, no sales model for uh, Apple TV. I, I, I'll get into that in a minute. You, you should talk. Seriously, look at the file format. Print in the new Apple TV specs. Yeah. I mean, okay, H.264 up to 720p at okay. 30 frames per second. AAC low complexity audio up to 160 kilobits per second or per channel. 48, now I guess that'd be total, I would imagine. I would imagine. 48 kilohertz audio in MV4, MP4, and MOV file formats. Mm -hmm. Can we say that Apple hates Blu-ray rips? Just a little bit. Just maybe. Also, MPEG-4 video up to 2.5 megabit at 640 by 480 resolution. Yeah, 30 SD. frames per second. Yeah, that's, HD's dead? Oh, least, no. It's progressive, at least. <laughs> no, SD's dead? No. <laughs> and motion JPEG at 1280 by 720, 30 frames per second. So, 720p video, Dolby Digital 5.1 surround sound pass through. That's a start. Yeah, that's yeah. good. And just for fun, I'll point out there's no component video, just HDMI, which means Apple just shut the analog loophole. Which they probably had to do to get the content agreements that they want. Well, also that tiny form factor, too. Yeah. There are only three more ports under that. That's true. Unless you want to go with dongles. Dongle free. Dongle free. Live it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Here's the thing that kind of, I mentioned it a second ago Apple is all rental. No sales, no onboard storage, no sales, fine. It's just no ownership of media, just rentals. Five bucks a rental for HD content first run, which okay. basically means when the DVD comes out, you're gonna pay five bucks for an HD rental. That's 24 hours access or it'll sit for like 30 days on your Apple TV, so, basically. So I don't have to leave the house if I want that HD, HD stream. hd uh, 720p is HD, uh, but. You're going to need a lot more bitrate to make that, that 1080p yeah. look better. So, you know, it's all compromises. Yeah, other HD rentals are $3.99. Again, no option to buy. Way to stick it with two uh, parents with small children. Steve, love you, babe. Or people that love watching their favorite movie. Or perhaps, perhaps I divine a higher power here. Steve's plot to drive Blu-ray consumption. I mean, think about it, right? 20 bucks for a Blu-ray from Amazon or Fry's versus $4.99 a pop for a 720p HD rental on my 1080p TV. Which, by the way, if it's a children's cartoon, maybe they forgot to de-interlace. <laughs> Bitter, oh. bitter am I? Bitter am I? Oh. Or he's trying to drive folks to Netflix, right? I like that idea. The maybe, partnership is there. Maybe Apple's going to buy Netflix, block it from all the other platforms, and that's when they're going to take <laughs> Apple TV from a hobby, right? Because Steve calls it a hobby, and, and, and I think it's kind of cool for a company to have a hobby, to an actual revenue driver. TV shows, 99 cents an episode HD, that's kind of cool. But yeah. again, it's rentals. So, okay, for the price of a pack of gum, less than the price of a pack of gum, you can watch a HD television show. That's, that's kind of cool. Streaming, it, and this is really also going to screw up. I could up. get an HD TV show for a buck. Yeah. 
I would be more inclined to. But if it's Do like you ever a watch a, a, a television show more than once? Because I watched Rescue Me like three times. Okay, I have certain, and not all in the same. Yeah, okay, there are certain shows period. that I have permanently saved on my DVR and occasionally, especially like the season finales from last season. Ain't uh, gonna save it permanently on your Apple TV. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. I love hard drives. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of thumbs down for now. Form factor, great. Doesn't yeah. run hot, great. Tiny. No storage management, great. Except um, every time I launch a new 24-hour window, boom! That's another five bucks to Apple. Only ABC and Fox are on board from start, and there are no iApps. I think it's going to be interesting to see. I, you know, the flip side is as cranky as I am about this. I can also smell the glorious sound of Steve kicking the door open to movie theaters and movie theaters, movie studios. You can feel the pry bar at the door. Getting that content. As he's freeing he's, it onto the internets for legal yeah. distribution. There you go. Because you can smell him being like, look at all the money that insert name here made renting on, you know, the iTunes store. That'd That'd be interesting. Interesting. Could be interesting. Could be. I have a question, too, about, like, Boxy. Do you think yeah. Boxy will run on this new box? <sighs> <laughs> uh, are you able to add like external storage to this box? Well, we're gonna find out. I uh, think I think the new box is running on the A4 right. or the, the A4 chip from. Well, yeah. Basically, the new box is this in a little yeah. square box with no screen, which also would explain the lack of 1080p because the processor in this can't handle it 1080p. Okay. Now, our two favorite set-top boxes remain the Western Digital WD TV Live and Live Plus. The Plus adds Netflix and Roku's box, which, oddly enough, dropped in price this week. The HD model went from $99.99 to $69.99, while the HD XR that adds 802.11n dropped from $129.99 to $99.99, 100 bucks even. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. And, uh, well, well, while everybody else is dropping their prices, Microsoft... I'm just wondering. Well, okay, Xbox evangelist Major Nelson announced on his blog early last week that Microsoft was going to be increasing the price of Xbox Live Gold memberships in certain regions starting November 1st. In the U.S., a one-year subscription will rise from $49.99 a year to $59.99 a year. Three-month subscriptions jump from $20 to $25. One-month plans jump from $8 to $10. And it, it basically, one-month plans everywhere, the U.K., Mexico, Canada, uh, probably all of Europe. Uh, the reason we care, though, is because gold-level membership allows Xbox Live users to access streaming video services like Netflix in the U.S., Sky Player in the U.K. and Ireland, Foxtel in Australia, and Vodafone Casa TV in Portugal. Bet you didn't know we knew that. Uh, also accessible <laughs> via gold membership will be the upcoming Hulu Plus and ESPN On Demand service. And, of course, the penny-arcade.com take on this is that Microsoft is now holding your friends on the Xbox for ransom. It's, it's the online experience, man. You, <laughs> it, if you want it back, pay a little bit more. I'm telling you. First taste is... is there is, ar arguably, is no better console online community game slash gaming right. service there is right now than the Xbox system. Yeah. Xbox 360. It's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be interesting to see if Boxy and, and D-Link drop the price of the Boxy boxes are heading into Christmas. Because obviously, okay. better, so this is shipping in, soon. the Apple TV is shipping in September. The Boxy box is shipping in November. I suspect uh, D-Link may take a hit on the price of the hardware. It's going to be or, a crazy holiday season. Yeah, it's, yeah, between that, you know, a new round of cheap HD TVs, yes. new rounds of cheap hard drives, three terabyte hard drives. More you know, storage. It's a good time to be loving the HD. I'm telling you, man. Got to have a room for it yeah. and a place to show it and uh, services to take <laughs> advantage of it. And it's, it's all good. Oh, my goodness. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, ladies and gentlemen, Gamefly.com. It's the largest online video game rental service. They offer you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds with plans starting at $15.95 a month. You, if you're a Gamefly member, can rent one to four games at a time, keep them for as long as you like. No late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, send it back. Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you really like the game you're playing, click Keep It on the Gamefly website, and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Want to score a two-week free trial? Of course you do. HD Nation fans, you can score that free trial when you go to Gamefly.com slash HD Nation. So restrictions to apply. See the site for details. Please support HD Nation by trying out our sponsors like Gamefly.com slash HD Nation. Hey, the end of summer is here. Sad. And we figured what better way to see out the season than with the top five summer movies in HD. They're great for winter, too. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Makes you remember what we miss about summer. Anyway, movies that we feel capture or at least replay the fun in the sun. So if you don't find your favorite flick listed, do let us know and we might use it next year. 500 days of summer. 
starring Zoe Deschanel and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. This quirky romantic comedy, you know, they're all a little quirky about love and fate, focuses on a young greeting card writer, Tom Hansen, who believes in true love. When he meets his new co-worker, Summer Finn, he believes he's found the one, or has he? The movie follows their relationship well, as it jumps back and forth between various points in time in their romance, uniquely shot. Looks gorgeous in HD, and it's pretty funny, too. Vacation. You want to do this one? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what? Uh, the quintessential family road trip movie. Vacation is a must-see comedy for anyone contemplating a highway adventure with the family. Chevy Chase plays Clark Griswold, a food scientist and father who wishes to spend more time with his family. His plan? A cross-country drive from the suburbs of Chicago to the mythical Wally World theme park out in California. Things go from bad to worse as the Griswolds try to survive mishaps, relatives, the law, and possible divorce on their journey. <laughs> Field of Dreams. It's said that baseball is a great American pastime and one that millions of Americans watch every summer. Field of Dreams takes the spirit of baseball and ties in, well, some pretty metaphysical stuff that encompass dreams, aspiration, hope, family, and drops them right in the middle of an Iowa cornfield. One of Kevin Costner's better movies, he plays Ray Kinsella, who hears voices telling him if you build it, he will come. This is a great, fun, family-friendly flick. And if you're a baseball fan and haven't seen this, oh, rent it now, immediately. Hey, next up we have I Know What You Did Last Summer. It's the horror flick that helped reboot that teen scream genre. It stars Jennifer Love Hewitt, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Ryan Phillippe, and Freddie Prince Jr. The story starts up when a group of teens accidentally hit a man with their car. Frightened of what's happened, they dump the body into the sea and agree to never speak of it again. Uh-huh. The following year, Julie, Jennifer Love Hewitt, coming home on her way back from college, receives a threatening message with, quote, I know what you did last summer. Cue mayhem, <laughs> screaming, of death. Of course. Predictable screaming, <laughs> killing, and dying follow. But if you're a fan of teen horror flicks, I know what you did, I know what you did last summer should be at the top of your list. Adventureland, people. No, not Zombieland. If it's one thing summer means for most students, it's summer jobs. Mowing lawn, washing cars, working swing shifts at Walmart. Oh, goody. And running a carnival booth at an amusement park? Adventureland recalls the hazy, halcyon days of crappy dead-end summer jobs you worked during college and the rather peculiar people you might meet there. Often mistaken for Michael Sarah, Jesse Eisenberg plays a James Brennan college grad who, because of his parents' financial woes, must cancel his summer vacation and move to Pittsburgh with them. A great, if somewhat self-conscious coming-of-age movie, Adventureland is funny and and sweet and worth your time. Awesome. Time for the new Blu-ray releases? Let's do that. It's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of September 7th, 2010. First up, MacGruber. Continuing Saturday Night Live's long tradition of spinning off recurring skits into their own feature films, MacGruber stretches the normally one-minute sketch into a painfully unfunny hour and a half. Starring Will Forte as the titular hero, along with fellow SNL castmate Kristen Wiig and Ryan Phillip, the film follows MacGruber's attempts to stop a madman, terrorist, and former college buddy Dieter von Kumpf. Starring Will Forte as the titular hero, along with fellow SNL castmate Kristen Wiig and Ryan Phillippe, the film follows MacGruber's attempt to stop madman, terrorist, and former college buddy Dieter von Kumpf from using a stolen nuclear missile on Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Although highlighted by some genuinely funny moments, MacGruber is saddled with bad sight gags, innuendos, dialogue, and ultimately poor concept. The extras don't offer much in the way of interest, with the blooper reel and deleted scenes being even more tedious than the movie itself. The upside? It looks just as bland on Blu-ray as it did in the theater, so at least it's an accurate transfer. If you love SNL, rent the movie, but for everyone else, stay away. Next up, The Office, season six. Steve Carell stars in this hilarious TV series adapted from the BBC series from Ricky Gervais. Shot in a mockumentary style, the show follows the employees of Dunder Mifflin as they slog through the workday, deal with the inept boss, as well as day-to-day -day issues and landmark events like marriage, parenthood, and more. While the British version only lasted two seasons, The Office is about to start its seventh season this fall. Extras on this five-disc set include an uncensored digital short, over two hours of deleted scenes, a blooper reel, Dwight's tribute to Canada, as well as several episodes worth of commentary from the cast and crew. Plus, with the BD Live feature, you'll be able to watch the latest episodes from Season 7 on your TV in HD starting the day after they air, with, quote, limited commercial interruptions, unquote. That's a first. It should be interesting to see how this pans out. Also released this week, Stardust. Adapted from the book by Neil Gaiman and directed by Matthew Vaughn from Kick-Ass, this fairy tale is producer Serafina's favorite movie from 2007. It stars Charlie Cox, who decides to travel into an unknown magical land to retrieve a fallen star, played by Claire Danes. 
Also featuring Michelle Pfeiffer, Peter O'Toole, and Ricky Gervais, this hilarious film has everything you could possibly ask for in a movie. Action, adventure, comedy, romance, even a flying pirate ship captained by Robert De Niro. Other releases this week include The Black Dahlia, Blood Into Wine, Camp Rock 2, The Final Jam, A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, Chuck, The Complete Third Season, Desert People 8, Forbidden Planet, Hatchet, 1967's In Cold Blood, It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, Jim Gaffigan, Beyond the Pale, 2010's Killers, 2008's The Loss of a Teardrop Diamond, 1998's Lost in Space, Mars Attacks, Matrix Reloaded, Megadeth, Rust in Peace Live, 2007's Numb, The Player, Poltergeist, 2006's Pulse, The Skeleton Key, Smallville, The Complete Ninth Season, Solitary Man, Supernatural, The Complete Fifth Season, That Evening Sun, Thomas and Friends, Misty Island Rescue, 1975's Tommy, The Movie, THX 1138, and Wonders of the Solar System. Hey, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. With more than 15 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV episodes and movies over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. This week, my Netflix queue drifts back into the sci-fi realm with the 1998 mindbender, Dark City. You know I had to go with the unrated director's cut on Blu-ray that also includes a hopefully sweet-sounding 7.1 channel DTS HD soundtrack. For $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streamed to their TVs and computers, and can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to their homes. Blu-ray plans start at just $5.99 a month. With Netflix, there are never any due dates or late fees, and shipping is free. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly, and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among the large and expanding number of devices streaming TV episodes and movies from Netflix are Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PlayStation 3 game console, and the Nintendo's Wii console. As a new member and HD Nation viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to netflix.com slash hdnation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. Got to give a shout out to my crew over at the Desert People, race-desert.com, the shop there, or desertpeople.com. You can buy the Blu-ray of, well, what you're looking at now, gorgeous racing action, and it's family-friendly, so you don't have to worry about people doing weird things with long tubes that smoke or get naked and freaky. We're talking about pure dirt, nasty, well, dirty. It's dirty. It's dirt. <laughs> Anyhow, it's good Blu-ray if you like uh, desert racing action. Check it out, people. Plus, they got all the stuff with the short course racing. Just desert people. D-E-Z-E-R-T people dot com. Z. Sorry. Desert with the Z. Boxy has company on the whole. Take the open source glory that is XBMC to a new level. It's called Plex. Well, it's been around for a while. Uh, available for free at plexapp.com. They released version 9, like Wednesday last week. Pretty much fresh software. Yeah, like 12.01 a.m. the day the uh, the Apple TV release. Uh, well, the basically new version 9 plus iOS remote applications for the iPhone and iPad. So Plex, the media viewer formerly known in the, back in the day as OS X, BMC is OS 10 only. Sorry, Windows folks. And it's less social media tool than superb looking interface and a base for plug-in and applications. Like, uh, okay, I haven't figured out, supposedly Netflix will run on this, but I haven't actually figured out how to do it, right? But this is the nice. basic interface. It runs a server on your system and then an application on your machine. And let's skip the plugins and go straight to music. It's subjectively, pretty beautiful looking interface. I mean. And this isn't even one of the skin ones. This is the stock interface that comes with it. Nice. So I go into music, I pick all artists, and look, it's of course scrubbing the internet, pulling down the information. None of this information was available in my iTunes collection, but. Uh, nice. What do you like? The magnetic fields? You're a big Stephen Merritt fan, right? Of course. <laughs> we go in and it gives you the album, the album cover, and you can also change. I've been listening your... to a lot of country music this week. Oh, well, in which case. Actually, the magnetic field doesn't bother you. Let's go to the old 97s. That's not entirely country. The hang dogs, that's totally country, as long as you don't mind your country coming from uh, New York City. And I can also change around how I look at this, go into a cover flow mode. And oh, nice. Yeah, so that's all the tracks on the hang dog album. And let me go back, change the view on that. But I go in, I pick an album. Actually, do one for Brett, Converge. And nice. 
I'm still playing around with the configuration on this because I realize, right, with, when you're dealing with a media manager, if you don't meticulously massage your media, you'll find out you have like 32 episodes of Curious George that are DRM wrapped from iTunes in a folder that this accesses under movies because you mislabel it incorrectly when you set it up. And I mean, the, the setup's actually pretty easy. Download it, it's free, point it to your media files, point it to the right files and separate your DRM files from your, your files that are not locked. Launch it, let it scan. If you want to get really fancy, you, you load an application called Preen. And what Preen does is makes it super easy to load. Da, 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 da. Someday I'll find these settings. Uh, preferences, appearance, lets you load skins. And there's some absolutely gorgeous skins. Basically, Preen requires you to download Git. That's a free Google application. Yeah, it's crazy, actually. <laughs> Here, video applications. And that should pull up. Look at that, CNET TV Revision 3. Okay, there's, there's some perspective issues here and there, but the thing just launched. I go into Revision 3, it pulls up an application, so I can go into Current Shows, and I can go to, hey, Dan 3.0, that's new. Nice. Film Riot, Food Bob, Geek Pete, HD Nation. I've seen that before. And I can pull down, <laughs> doesn't that look familiar? <laughs> Look, it's free, it's available, it's gorgeous, and if you're looking for something, you know, if, look, if you like the idea of Box, if you use XPMC, check out Plex if you're running an OS 10 box at home. Has oh, to be OS 10? Has to be OS 10. Currently OS 10 only, although it does actually have, they've got uh, iOS apps for the iPad and the iPhone, which actually lets you do a remote. Oh, and, uh, that would be nice. Yeah, so you can use your giant iPad as your home theater oh, remote. Okay, that I like. <laughs> yeah, I figured well, you would. Um, <laughs> you are living the Apple lifestyle. Well, there's a lot of, <laughs> you know, it and just kind of happened, I'm dude. Wildly jealous. <laughs> well, you can also turn around and go into the library and it'd be like, okay, I want to watch a movie. I'm going to go to all movies. I'm going to go to Kick Ass because I like Kick Ass. And look at that. And then I can go to my remote and I can skip forward and skip back. All running off of the I still haven't iPad. seen this movie. Oh, I'm just sorry, I'm, dude. I'm trying to preserve hey. it. Hey, <laughs> for the first time, I can sit down with the Blu-ray in my in my comfortable living environment and just absorb that greatness that is Kick-Ass. Yeah, cool though. It's pretty fun. I like the free. All right. Would you recommend uh, any hardware limitations as far as what piece, what what kind of Apple hardware you should run this on, other than the OS? I think it'll pretty much run on anything. Dot dot dot. Go to the Plex wiki at plexapp.com. Go to the wiki, and they will give you the full information on that. Nice. Uh, yeah. You, well, you're not doing Blu-ray, and uh, and uh, I will say you got to watch out for your configuration if you want to do. Is that a 1080p interface? Well, this one's it's looking <laughs> 1080p to me. <laughs> It looks 1080p. Here's the thing, though, right? There's no HDMI out on any of the older, oh, okay. you know, MacBooks or or, or uh, Mac Minis or so Mac you're using desktops. Using DVI HDMI cable, which yeah, which means you also need a, a, an flipper. optical cable to route out your audio. Do you have optical out on your notebook? Yeah, all uh, all MacBooks, all even the cheap MacBooks. Have, I not know It's these buried things. inside the headphone jack. Nice. It's secret. You just plug the optical cable into the regular That's old pretty uh, slick. headphone jack. You can't have you can't have HDMI on a notebook. You have to have that. That's pretty cool. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace.com, people. It's a publishing system. It's a hosting system. It's for anybody looking to build a blog, a portfolio, or any kind of website. Do it themselves without spending a lot of money. They got blog tools that allow iPhone updating on the go. If you're moving from another platform, they got hassle-free importing of sites, some pretty slick stats tools, and quite a bit more. Squarespace makes it super easy for anyone to build out and maintain a site that you could only dream of or pay a lot of cash for on other platforms. And if you do have coding experience, awesome, because Squarespace allows you to delve into the code and customize things even further. Tens of thousands of people all across the internet have been using Squarespace for years, and Squarespace's already great service is only getting better by the day. Do yourself a favor, head over to squarespace.com, get your free 14-day trial, and if you decide to stick with Squarespace, and I bet you will, be sure to use the promotion code HDNATION when placing your order. You'll get 10% off for the lifetime of your account. Hey, viewer Nick Craig had a follow-up question about one we answered last week about why theaters still look better than HD TVs. Craig writes, quote, I just watched this week's HD Nation and you had a question about why the movies in his Sony Bravia looked too smooth and unlike film compared to the movie theater, which he felt looked better. Well, the answer you all gave was just about how much better the theater projector was than his HD TV. But I think he was talking about the feature that a lot of LCDs have. They go by names like D-Judder and were meant for fast moving stuff, but when used on regular movies, they looked awful. I don't feel you addressed that question all the way and hope you could elaborate on those extra features and why they exist. Signed, Craig in Texas. Dump it up, but it 
<laughs> Actually, I agree with Craig about this. I kind of got caught up in the whole digital cinema's color advantage more than right. anything. Uh, the fact that digital cinema has a larger palette of colors and finer steps between each hue. He's uh, big on the pa hue palette. Now, now that film motion you're talking about, like on panning shots you can see this in just about any scene, you'll see a slight visual stutter. And that's called judder. And it is most noticeable in those long panning shots, really. Uh, movie gladiators one I always look at for this type of thing because they have about two or three epic panning shots that go on for several seconds that are, it really highlights that, ep uh, that, that artifact, you, if you want to call it that. Now the primary cause of judder is the source material's relatively slow frame rate, meaning that film is shot at 24, <laughs> 24 frames, frames per, per second, second compared to say most new LCD televisions that produce refresh rates, the screen is updating 120 hertz or greater, 120 times per second. And these TVs come factory preset so that that de-judder function uh, with video material is enabled. Uh, namely, they're using frame interpolation, uh, adding of synthetic intermediate frames to that video source in order to match the frame, the, the refresh rate of the TV is really what you're trying to do. You're trying to match that, that frame rate of the video source to the refresh rate of the TV. And you can turn off a TV's de-judder function, and it does not, I repeat, does not change it from simply a TV that was running at 240 hertz or 120 hertz to suddenly into a 60 hertz TV. The TV still operates and refreshes the screen at the same rate. It's just doing something a little bit different with each frame of video. Essentially, it's doing, instead of frame interpolation, it's doing right. frame repeating. And digital so cinema five setups. of the same frame yeah. instead of doing strange. Let me and let me figure out what's between point A and B right. and put a little intermediate frame in there that's kind of like the halfway point, and you do that usually several times. And mm -hmm. it can introduce errors. It can introduce just that smoothing effect you might not like compared to the way it looked in the theater. <laughs> uh, digital cinema setups don't use a de judder technology because they are keeping it real by using the display device that was originally designed from the beginning to accept that 24p content and properly display it. Now, your typical HDTV, on the other hand, is designed to deal with a dozen or more video formats, each with different frame rates, different resolutions. Some TVs provide a discrete de-judder control for film and video content. Those are my favorites. Samsung's latest TVs are doing that, as well as a couple other manufacturers. Uh, I gotta say, though, that the thing I like about having the separate control for both mm -hmm. is that with film, I can turn off that de-judder function and have it just do straight frame repeating and keep that look, while at the same time with my video sources, I can go ahead and enable a little interpolation to help, you know, or, or literally with some content that's shot on video, you don't even need that either, but in general, I like to leave a little bit of it running because it seems to add a little more clarity to the picture. Right. So the bottom line really is that each HDTV is a little bit different. So depending on which model you have from which manufacturer, you need to experiment to figure out which settings are gonna give what you feel are gonna be the best results. And that could be, some people like a little bit of smoothing, a little bit, maybe they don't want it full <laughs> bore. You don't wanna turn it all the way up because then you get the most interpolation going on, but maybe just a little bit to help maybe tone down that judder a little bit. Yeah, what you don't want is to turn a two zillion dollar Panavision rental camera into something that looks like a cheap 1980s era no. video. Recorder. And we've got a couple of new TV sets in house too, so we're gonna be digging into some of the settings in, yeah. in those, and we'll show you specifically what settings we're talking about from a couple different manufacturers so you can get an idea of what's going on there. To get your judder on, as it were. Or off. <laughs> De-judder or not to judder. Seth writes in, I'm planning on buying a NAS that uses either four or five SATA drives. Which RAID configuration would I need to do to make all four or five drives act as one giant drive? I don't need any redundancy. <laughs> you say that now. <laughs> I just want to be able to take four or five two terabyte drives and make them appear as eight or ten terabytes. Seth. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, yeah, okay, Windows Home Server, right, that does a pretty good job of combining a bunch of drives into one single giant drive that all of your applications yeah. and stuff can access. I wouldn't get all like, I don't need redundancy and I don't need parity data because depending on the RAID controller you use, you can lose lots and lots of content by, by losing a drive. Yeah, I'm if, just saying. If you have a single drive failure, which over right. time it is guaranteed to happen at some point, so. Yeah. Uh, it, it's nice to use one of the RAID settings that does enable some type of, type of redundancy. Right. The setting you're probably looking for, though, if you want to just go right into it, is something called JBOD, or just a bunch of drives. <laughs> JBOD. JBOD. <laughs> that's been around for a while, and that's probably the term they're using within the setup for your mm -hmm. RAID controller to make that happen. Uh, basically, you're doing concatenation or spanning of several drives, like right. Pat was talking about, into one single virtual drive. And, and Windows 7 will actually do that. I'm 
pretty sure OS 10 will do that. I'll never try to do it. Windows 7 will actually do that. Create one giant drive. Windows XP will do that. Yeah, unlike that so. Trobo product we showed off last week, yeah. where it had five drives and any one, or had five drive bays, and right. any one could fail, or up to two if you want to do it. Right. Uh, with the setup you're talking about, when one goes, all your data's gone. Yeah, but if you go and RAID 5 acts would be more typical if you're buying like a non-Drobo device, a non-UnRAID. DIY would be an UnRAID device. FreeNAS is another one. Um, but most of those devices either use RAID 5 or a variation on RAID 5, which does the spanning I would think it, and it's parity called data. spanning, or it might be just called JBOD. I've seen it yeah. listed literally as JBOD is number one option. It's like if that's right. what you want. And that's that'll forward. that'll give you one giant drive out of all of your smaller drives. Sweet. All right, our final question comes from Tim, who writes in, I just started a company specializing in home theaters, home integration, and recording studio installs, and I want to be able to service high-end clientele. Don't we all? I'm a journeyman recording engineer, and I've worked as an assistant engineer studio tech. I feel that I have enough knowledge in the audio side of things to get started, but I was wondering if there are additional certifications and training I should get to better serve my clients. Tim in SoCal. Yeah. Oh, yes, there are. There can. Yeah. I, my experience with audio calibration certification stems from a two-day THX home theater professional workshop I attended a couple of years ago. And I'll be perfectly honest, it was one of the more intense training workshops I've participated in. Uh, we covered subjects including hardware selection, testing and verification, room environment and correction. Mm -hmm. uh, included a lot of hands-on time. And we were, and the following second day, we ended up putting a lot of what we learned in our lessons to practical use. Uh, those courses are not cheap, but I found it to be an invaluable experience that continues to serve me to this very mm -hmm. day. And it, it kind of looks good to have that stamp of approval. Plus. You get all of, when you take a training course like that now, I'm sure there are other very valuable HD uh, or home theater audio side of training courses out there available, but it was, it was just nice to have their library of expertise, the THX guys, to be able to right. pull from. I can go to their website. I can direct people to it. People can find me through that site. That, those kind of things, and just that back-end support is something I found really awesome. Does THX also do a video version of that class? They do. They have a video calibration course. And actually, if you happen to be in the Atlanta area coming up in a couple <laughs> weeks for Cedia, they're doing, their in, they're doing their level one course, the intro right. course to video calibration, and they're doing it for $49. That's so, cheap. Nor, yeah, normally it's, it's 10 times that so, or more. And so if you want to take that intro course to see if it's something you're even interested in, Go hit up the THX website and you can find uh, information there about the upcoming training courses being offered at this year's CEDIA in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, I, also, I should point out, by the way, uh, as much poo as we like to fling at George Lucas, he did sit down and realize that most of the theaters in the, in the late 70s were awful. Uh, the audio was worse than the projectors, and the projectors were a mess. THX was his attempt. The THX thing you see means that somebody's gone in and verified that the audio and the video systems inside the theater are actually, well, looking kind of like what they should, so that the film on the screen looks like what the director shot and edited. What about ISF certification? That I've only experienced on the video side of things. Things. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure off the top of my head if it's Imaging Science Foundation, right. so I don't but know. But if, if they he's have doing an both audio. audio and video, would an ISF certification would. be helpful? I would definitely. Because that I, seems to be the ground zero for any kind of screen and to a lesser degree projectors. Totally. Having certified, it's one thing to have the manufacturer take care of getting that certification, mm -hmm. but going through one of these training courses really gets you knee deep into whether it's a certified product or not, how right. to test something and verify that it's properly working, how to, how to find the flaws that may occur within a setup and just track those down and be able to nail them, how to make it all sound and look right. right. And, and I spe the room environment, particularly for audio, <laughs> is, is, is a black art. <laughs> yeah. it, it, there is as much science to it as there is just having experience just doing it. And I, I, power to you, uh, to be able to do that effectively, that's a valuable skill to have. And, and taking a course like the one I went through with the THX folks, it just showed me that it's learning never stops. Right. So and 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 oh boy, surround sound is vastly more complicated than stereo. And if you want high end clientele, I remind you, high end clientele are demanding because they're cutting large checks, so they expect everything to be right. Yeah, yeah. double edged sword right there. And then there's the whole control systems and integrated house control systems. That's my favorite part. Good luck with that. Integration, <laughs> integration is key. Oh, oh, integration makes my head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think. So send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. You can always find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash hdnation, and you can find links on pretty much everything we talked about in today's show right up there on the show notes and the show page at hdnation.tv. Hey, plus you'll find all the links to subscribe to the show, so please subscribe <laughs> and watch. And until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Robert Heron. We'll see you next week.